So, got a few questions to ask you. Have you developed a range of communication skills to assist you in building and maintaining strong relationships with clients and colleagues? Oh, yes, yes, I certainly have. Would you like me to... Oh, hang on. Jimmy! How are you, Jimmy? Oh, nothing, mate. <laughs> Nothing at all. Yeah, right now. Oh, of course I can. All right, I'll be there in a minute. I've developed a range of communication skills um, to assist me in building and maintaining strong relationships with clients and colleagues. One example I can give you is with local pro uh, protocols. What happens is we identify the changes or a new protocol that needs to be um, formed within the office. We jot down ideas and present these at the staff meetings. Then we create a new protocol where everybody has input into this. We train the staff in the new protocol and then we follow up um, afterwards to ensure that the protocol is effective. All right, next question. How have you contributed to communication with colleagues? I can give you an example of uh, where I've helped to assist a, a colleague with sending an email to a service provider regarding uh, questions that they've had for a service. I helped with the format of the email. Uh, I also proofread the email and ensured it maintained open communications, open lines of communication between the service provider and the um, office. And we did a follow-up email once we'd received that. How have you represented your agency to other groups within the community? Describing the methods um, to, I've used to represent the agency with other uh, groups in the community, well that's pretty much an easy one. That one um, I help to present with newsletters and information sessions. I put together flyers in relation to carers weeks and activities that uh, service providers, clients or colleagues may be attending. I've also helped with service provider breakfasts for networking opportunities and that involves actually contacting the service provider via email um, or phone communication and actually advising them of dates, times and um, RSVPs. I've also sent relevant documentation to service providers including service agreements uh, which go out yearly. We need to contact the service provider actually um, arrange an appointment time for the manager to attend and ensure once we receive that documentation back that it's all in order and goes down to head office for uh, clarification and to be placed onto the database. Can you detail st <coughs> strategies you have used in group facilitation? Strategies that I've used in group facilitations? Well, one, um, one example of this would actually be our staff meetings. Okay. What happens in a staff meeting is everybody attends and we actually sit down and listen to each other, including the manager. So that involves active listening on all parts of all staff. Um, I also document all the minutes and disseminate the relevant information at the end of the meeting to all attendees. So my written communication and my written skills must be very uh, up to date. And so for question number five, what specific communication techniques would you use in assisting to resolve a conflict within your workplace? That would also involve um, sitting down with the person that I'm having the conflict with or that may be involved in the conflict and actively listening to their side of the conflict and actually listening to the other person's side of the conflict. We have a discussion between the two parties, or if that's not um, possible, then we will involve a third member to resolve it. If the conflict's not resolved to a um, satisfactory conclusion for all parties, then it will be taken to a higher authority.